How's it going, boys? How's it going? Just got a bit of adhesive here on the... One, two, one, two. Oh, yoy. Look, it's like looking through a fog mirror. MGMT were class, man. Oh, give me a sec. Our Leamy Murphy, man. That's better. You don't know who's looking through the fucking webcam these days, boys. Can you hear me, Liam? Oh, dear God. Dear God above. How are we getting on? I did have a trim. Los Angeles, the city of angels. Los being Spanish for the. Actually, if that would just be the angels. Oh, all the boys are in. Fucking hell, man. You were quick. You obviously do, you weren't doing much, were you? you? Weren't doing much. Just knocking about. Where is he at? Was he just knocking about? Uh, right, this is more of a kind of a quick update for everybody. Uh, the first thing was. Uh, I haven't really been doing much for the last two weeks, but hey, it's fucking, I just need to take a bit of a break, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to get back into it tomorrow night. I'm going to have a party tomorrow night. No, I'm not actually, but I'm going to get Peter Ganley on the podcast. Now, Peter Ganley was is a great help to us in the Hardy books when we started off back in the day, like in the, himself and Fergal Darcy were working on the old uh, iRadio, and they were like, lad, why didn't you come on to the show and we'll give you a plug? And they did. And they were they helped us out with Storyline. So he'll be on, I'll be recording the podcast with him. I was going to do that tomorrow. Uh, Kevin E. Murphy, no one's been doing much to be fair. Yeah, that's, you know what? I kind of had a bit of a, uh, just a lapse of creativity where I was like, ah, oh, what's the point? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, Shady Ganley, that's a good question. Uh, he's the lad who in the webisodes said, um, he said, uh, oh, two euro, 10 euro to fight a man in the trailer. I, I, sat, I, think it was, I think it was him who said that. And he was, we're down here getting a calippo, that lad, from the Mitty Turbo Cup. Um, but yeah, but, you know, just with all the fucking lockdown, travel restrictions and everything, it's like my whole, um, my whole, uh, you know, fucking economy is just been, or like my job has just been, and everyone's like, why don't you use this opportunity with uh, COVID to... Uh, to live stream while everyone's stuck indoors. But, you know, I did a bit of that. And you kind of get a bit, you get a bit tired of it. And I don't want to like oversaturate it either. But to those on Patreon, I was having a look at the, uh, the Hardy books, the Hardy book that I've been doing. And um, yeah, I just need to reformat that. But I'll, be, I'll get another chapter of that up. I was looking at it. I was like, oh, it's so much stuff. I was supposed to do a podcast with Peter Ganley tonight. It didn't happen. But um, I deserved a break. Shawnee Taunton knows the crack. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. I, I went to uh, my mate Alan O'Neill's 40th there at the weekend. Boy, he's getting old, man. He was 23 when we first came to Sweden together. Big shout out to Alan O'Neill. Love you, baby boy. And uh, big fucking Rodney Dullahan. He's uh, another good lad. But uh, yeah, we went quad bike racing. Never been on a quad before. Always, oh, I have. I was a passenger on the back of one with some header down in Ackle. When I was 17, I just went surfing. Still had the wetsuit on. And he goes, jump on the back of this quad. I think it was a Suzuki Banshee. That thing was just one of the fastest modes of transport. Well, obviously, planes and shit aside, I've, I've never been propelled from one spot to the other in such rapid speed. Like, my brain was still behind where we started. I ended up jumping off the bastard. Uh, so they're pretty dodgy, man, pretty dodgy. Um. Fikra Milner, fucking my man, the Pride of Mullingar, by Pride of Mullingar. I am a bit tired. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long day of do, doing shit out with the. Um... Oh fuck! I see, I see that. Uh, I see that fucking name, man. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to get rid of that immediately. Uh, get the mods on that, but um, yeah, I can't be having that. Can't be having that. Um, no room for fucking slurs. That's supposed to be a good fucking, a good vibe. Man, that's shit, man. You know what I mean? Um, let me see. Yeah, I went quad bike racing, which was good crack. And uh, paintballing. Never did that either. Good crack. And uh, racing speedboats afterwards. Had a few drinks and played uh, a bit of poker. I never played, I've only ever played poker once before, and that was in 2006. And I, I never realized you could just sit hands out. So I was the first to go out. So 
this time I, I didn't win, but I came second place. So f for a man who didn't do it, I did all right. Anyone want to play poker, man? So uh, let me see. Ah, fucking Landormer, man. Landormer. Get the snake out the chat. That was pure fucking sabotage. Yeah, no, there's, there's, fuck that crack, man. Do you know what I mean? That, that's, that's bollocks, man. You know, don't be fucking cheapening the brand with fucking bad shit. That is just uh, unacceptable. Uh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, so uh, Peter Gann will be on the podcast tomorrow. That'll be a bit of crack. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and get another, another chapter of the Hardy book up. It's just so, so much fucking head work, man. I'm, I'm tired in my brain. Fucking tired. The hammer of Thor upon the Baddens. So how are you all doing? How's everyone getting on in, in the chat of dreams? Is it a dream chat? The last two chats had to go into private mode because uh, mad shit happens. The, uh, the, the stateside phone call. Stateside was on to me to book a ticket from over here in, to come over in the summer. So uh, stateside part three on the channel. Even though the first stateside got taken down for some... YouTuber, they're fucking shit, man. They're, like, they're taking a load of my videos down. They're saying, like, there's all these copyright claims and, yeah, some other, like, fucking sexual material or something. I think that was due to my uh, America ADHD, something. And it was just, like, uh, a picture of, like, a man grabbing another lad's flute. And it was just, America, fuck yeah. So, uh, yeah, YouTube's shit crack, man. But, you know, it's the biggest... Because when I know the house dates I've been, he was in some form. Uh, he's, he's still a bit fucking cranky about it. Uh, when he found out McGarren had a new TV show, he was like, I don't understand. How was that man in the ice cream van with me, Martin? I just don't understand it. So uh, I'll ring to Stockholm for a weekend. Just get a few. Uh, I'll drop a like now for the algorithm. Fair play, TQ. Fair play. Back to and Pints over here, but you have to buy a nine euro meal and have. Do you know what? As uh, Uncle Mick would say, it's a fool that'll go out on an empty stomach and have a belly full of drink. So uh, I should look if you can buy him chicken wings. That's a great deal. Fucking old hot dog, hamburger, some shite, a couple of chips. I won't say no to a bit of food, lads. That's fucking gosh, bro. Take her handy, and this pint is for you. Ooh. The threat of bumming. Don't know yet, man. Uh, speaking of uh, sexual deviance, Jizz stain cracks well. Uh, apparently, I was I was uh, watching this lad Jamie Deluxe. He had a video where apparently she's going to have this thing called Queen for a Day, where she gets to blab on bad boys with uh, complete immunity. That was strange shit's going on, man. But uh, I was watching I was watching BBC News the other night. It's just like every single article was about Corona. I'm really bored of it, sick of it. Don't care about. It it anymore you know what i mean i just i just want life to go back to normal so uh the crack can be had and that's coming from a man who's been living in sweden which has been pretty sound for all intents and purposes for the common man and um yeah a pint of schlump that's fucking hard stuff danny that's hard stuff don't know what sifo don't leave you up to man the last time i heard he was living in a box under the bridge downtown it's where he drew some blood, man. Peace up. Seafood and Levy. Don't be fooled. Epstein's chilling in Tel Aviv. <laughs> Who knows, man? Pack keys. Back, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, what else was going to say? Yeah, that was it, really. I'm just um, just letting you know I'm still around, still doing stuff. But uh, time, man. Time and brain power. Best pub food, chicken wings, man. Chicken wings. You cannot. The old familiar sting is right, Hertzler. The old familiar sting. Yeah, man. That's one thing about Sweden you can't get is good, good chicken wings. If ever, if any of you guys are ever in London, there's a place that's in Bloomsbury called Wing Wing that do the best chicken wings I've ever had. Asian jabs. Asian wings. But they do this thing called an onion brick, which is just like shredded onion. Probably laced with uh, fucking, what's it called? It? That shite, fucking GHB. What's it called? Um, MSG. Probably riddled in that shite. Is that Arnold in the thumbnail? Yes. 
Are you going to do any film TV in Ireland soon? David, there's, there's nothing really going on, man. The, the whole... There was a film with your man, uh, Michael Sheen, some other lad. They managed to do a TV show over over Zoom, which is basically about two actors who were trying to rehearse a play over Zoom. I mean, is that, is that going to be the future of entertainment, just everything being done over chat groups? Did anyone, did anyone ever see that video of uh, that personal trainer in Scotland who was doing a live seminar with all his uh, clients? And it was just two lads, old dudes, just naked, wanking into this random Zoom conference call. I thought it was two lads who had, um, who had been members of the gym and just thought, we're going to take this opportunity to crack one off. But uh, I think they were just, I mean, either way, it's still fucked up, but they were just strangers who dropped in for a quick Tommy Hank. I saw your death in Vikings the other day. Passion of Christ job. Yeah, it was pretty intense. It is. Oh, you gray mean Russell. Gray mean Russell. Stones of the Beatles. It's a good question. That is a good question. I was more of a Beatles man. But this, I think the Stones' earlier stuff was good. Don't know, man. Probably the Beatles, just because they're from Liverpool, and they are, they, they, they didn't... I don't know. Probably the Beatles, but there's not much... A state I would say about himself and the block of flats. There's not much between us, Morton. The only thing is, that guy's a bit wider than I am. Yeah, man. Fucking uh, Oasis of Blur. Oasis, man. Oasis. Oasis. Does the sun ever set in Sweden? It's uh, quarter past ten now. It's starting to, it's starting to, the nights are starting to draw in again, which is good because it's trying to get sleep and it's three in the morning. The sun's cracking the stones, man. Amy Cork, ah, fucking Amy, man. Pride of Mullingar job, is it? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. I remember back in the early days of Facebook, you left a comment of a picture I have of Fedor facing off with seven foot tall Hong Kong man, man uh, Hong Man Choi. You asked me, is that fucking big Jimmy Dunleavy? Oh man, yeah, that that's one. Do you ever see? Is, is he the same lad? No, no, <laughs> no. I know the one you're on about. Is uh, Fedor got him in a got him in an armbar? Was he about seven foot ten or something? There was. Uh, there's another one of. Um, Oh, some American guy with a mustache, wears cowboy hats all the time. Can't remember his name. Fuck against some Korean dude, and the two of them are just going like this, <laughs> punching each other in the face. Someone probably get the name in the in the in the title there. In my kokuru, in my soul, in my heart, in my kokuru, the will to crush your enemies. Armbar job for the win. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Me and the lads used to look at that all the time, and the boo was always like, "How did he do it, man?" The Fedor, he's just unbeatable. He's unreal. What was your man's name? I'll have a little look. Crazy Army Fight. Mustache. I actually asked this a few. If you, uh... Oh, yeah. Yoshiro Takayama. Don Fry. That's it. Don Fry. That dude's a fucking. Yeah, check this out, man. Watch this later on in the, uh, I'll put it in the... Ladies and gentlemen, this is how real blokes fight. It's no mucking around. Real blokes. Tell you what, Aussie man's done fucking well for himself. Four million subscribers on YouTube, man. He's just, the only difference is, he's only got a few more subscribers than I do. That fight was done for uh, some, <laughs> some Japanese guy. But the Japanese lad's face at the end, man, it's just... It's like you just had some pancake mix and mixed it all around, you know. Was, didn't know what was going on. He had no face at the end of it. What do you think of Colgan's new show, Around the Fire? Will you make an appearance? I haven't watched it, to be honest with you. Uh, I won't be making an appearance this year, anyway. What's the boot to these days? The boot, he's busy. He's busy. He's uh, working in the medical sector. That's all I'll say, because he'd be like, don't be telling stories about what I've been doing in real life. All right, fair enough, fair enough. What do you think? Um, good crack, is it? I, I haven't seen it. I don't even know where you watch it, to be honest with you. You're in Anchorage, Alaska. We barely get any darkness this time of year, and it's a bit rough on the circadian rhythm. Yeah, and then you got, like, the winter, which is a whole different ball game. Sun and moon, man. 
Johnny Sullivan, you're welcome to the party. Aussie man has a recent video of a speedboat crash. It's gas shit. Yeah, you see, if I just kept it going, I've um, I just need to sit down and make some small videos again. Like, and, and those those commentaries are fucking piss easy, man. You just you just get something that's funny and then you add to it. That's what I'm gonna do. Green and red herbs. You mean like fucking Resident Evil job? Is it? Fry versus Shamrock. Oh, that would have been good. Frank or Ken? Irish boys, were they? Bostonians. Oh, the green and red meal, yeah. Shawnee knows well the crack. A lot of mods in the mix there. I like it. I like it. What's Chris Tordoff up to? Haven't spoken to the lad in two years. Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. He's probably sitting on a big mattress full of cash, just living it up, not giving a fuck, living life in the fast train. Scariest experience of my life, probably nearly drowning in Salt Hill. Uh, with uh, French toast in the boo back in 2008. Uh, being run over by a car. Probably the first time I did a bungee jump in EOS in Greece. And uh, yeah, that was, there was a guy at the bottom with a telephoto lens. He took a picture of it and it's just my face like this in sheer terror. We had to take it down off the wall in my mum's house because my niece was getting scared looking at it. Oh, fair play to you, Shawnee. Thanks for the SC. My favorite player is the bloke in the green and white shirt. He's fucking good, man. Do some Come Town video commentary. It'd be epic, man. Uh, Come Town's fucking hilarious, man. Those lads are just getting funnier and funnier. If I could, like, if I could find someone who I could just do podcasts with in that style, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> with the Creeler Cox and Salt Hill, that man was some legend. God bless him. Martian Cox. Oh, we didn't give a fuck about how many how many goals you got. It was how many creels did you get in? A paintball and I did it the weekend was good crack. It just makes you realise how confusing uh, a battle with guns must be, especially if you're like running in and out of buildings and lads shooting live rounds. Favorite pub in Swinford? It was um, it was O'Connor's Hotel. But poor old uh, Connor passed away, and then yeah, that was that was yeah. Do you know what's funny enough? I was lying in bed the other day and I was thinking about. Friend, a very, like one of my best mates in Swinford uh, was a lad called Connor Walsh, um, and he, he he died of a heart attack when he was thirty six. He had com an underlying complication, and yeah, I was just thinking about him. So uh, there's there's a couple of mates who who you lost, who we lost over the years. Spiller drop lads. Most beautiful car you've seen in person? That's a good question too. Um, funny enough, there's a neighbour down the road who has a nice. Uh, Volkswagen Arteon. They're, they're like a they're like a fancy Passat, and he's got some. Oh, I think it's an Oldsmobile V12 from 1935, and he's restoring that. It's pretty. It's pretty sweet. Chrome wrap Gallardo driven by Nell McGarry. McGarry knows what he's talking about. Don't stop. Lots of Volvos in Sweden. Not as many as the as the were, but in fairness, the Volvo have upped their game lately. I quite like the the shape of the Volvos. Ooh, I'm trying to think of some of the best cars. Probably when myself and Tordoff went down to the Cam Festival, we'd uh, we'd been travelling all day and we were like rabbits in the headlight with all these wankers in Ferraris just deliberately dropping the clutch, going, <laughs> and we're like, oh, we're from Swinford. A car Clarkson would. Fastest you've ever been in a car? Probably with uh, the Dragon in real life. He had a Subaru and Preza. Or maybe it was the Skyline that I borrowed as well. But uh, I'd really like to get into driving cars and then maybe making a show about it. I was supposed to do that this year, but the old lurgy from China started and fucked everything up. Did you rag that Skyline? I didn't because we were borrowing it from a guy. And after literally after half an hour of picking it up, I said to Pete, how much have I got left till, till the curb? He goes, hey, you got about another foot, man. And I thought he meant like, a foot and another inch or two, and it just like cracked the fairings on the front of it. So for the whole shoot, I was being really conservative with the car. But I, I fucking put the foot down. Put the foot down. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Woo! Claire Tully. What about her? Why aren't you and Todd off chatting anymore? I don't know, man. It's just the way life worked, wasn't it? I was going to ask the hottest woman celebrity you've seen in person, but honestly, who is the biggest celebrity wanker you met? Hmm, biggest celebrity wanker. Oh, fuck, man, I probably met a good few of them. 
Yeah, you need a few. I, I can't. I can't really recall off the top. Of it. I'd have to come back and just do one on celebrity wankers. Um, obviously, small world, the celebrity pool. You wouldn't know who you'd run into if they did get a fucking slip. But I, uh, I've met. I've met people that have been disappointing, but then, you know, um, I'm not even going to go into that either. But, but, but I, I've met a few. Put it that way. I've got a 2001 Subaru Impreza 2.5 RS and I've had it for 16 years. Wow, 16 years. I'd say she fucking goes, man. Turbo jab. Boxer engine. Would always love to see a documentary on boy races in Ireland. Such a religion. Well, uh, Jonah. Kev McGahan did one a couple of years ago. Apparently, they worshipped the, at the altar of Paul Walker and Vinny Diesel. How did you find filming three and four for RTE? Three was brilliant crack. For not so much crack, but there was some good moments. But we just they were re- they were really fucking intense about it. Um, what's your favorite Quentin Tarantino films? Mine, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Glorious Bastards. I haven't seen either of them actually. Um, probably Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs, the early stuff. I think I was. I liked his early work better, to be honest with you. Um. Yeah. Didn't he do? I didn't like Death Proof. All that kind of grindcore shit that he brought out, or gr- Grindhouse, or Splatterhouse, whatever the fuck it was called. I found them a bit just, just kind of too offensive for the sake of it. Or do you know what I mean? It was just like that's fucking it's weak. Like Planet Terror and Death Proof and all that. I did watch a film the other night called Bone Tomahawk. I don't know if you've seen that with Kurt Russell, but I, I quite like that. I like the way it was written. It was a good. It's a good film. And uh, what else did I watch? I watched Pacific Rim last night. It was all right. The uh, The Godzilla film a couple of years ago was pretty good. I love monster movies. I usually watch them with my daughter. Did you get to watch King of Staten Island with Bill Bear in it? King of Staten Island? No, I didn't see that. I will watch Inglorious Bastard at, at, at some stage. Man, I don't get the time to sit down and watch films, to be honest with you. Once Upon a Time in America, did someone mention that? That's a good film, Robert De Niro. I remember being, uh, I remember being a kid watching it, and I just, you know, when you're a kid, and there was like two films on that you'd like to watch. Let's say if it was like Commando with Arnie was on one, and like Mad Max Thunderdome was on another channel, you'd be like flicking through to try and get the best of both worlds. But um, they yeah, the cannibals, man. Yeah, you found out then what a fucking born tomahawk was. But uh, it was interesting. Pacific Rim almost didn't get approved for release. Nobody wanted their name on a rim job. <laughs> Pacific Rim. Just a load of lads rimming on the Pacific. Bill's Paper Tiger was good. Didn't feel as heavy as his prior ones. I love the one he's going, you know, there's not a lot of, a lot of gold digging whores these days. You know, look at so many great men. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, the guy, the best gig he could have got was unloading trucks in Transylvania. Fucking that flat top he's rocking from the 80s. A mi- the gap in his tooth. We could run this mic cord through. I love the way he's just talking about like how the dicks get them into the He's like, you know, you're at fucking third base. And, you know, you're trying to get, what is it? You get, you're sliding to third base and your dick is just slumped over going, ah, I don't know. That splitting screen in Bone Tomahawk. Oh, the splitting scene. Yeah, it was a bit fucking you know. But I knew that was coming up because uh, a couple of the lads were talking about that before. First pass is a great flick. Au revoir, Shoshana. Um, man, you bastard accent. Yeah, hey, what are you going to do? Should have been wearing my bastard hat. Yeah, I was hoping to head over to the States and do some comedy gigs and, and film my times over in the States, but the States are starting to look something like fucking Snake Plissken job. Kurt Russell. The people fucking escaping it next. Bone Tomahawk was awesome. I'd love Seed High Grindhouse 2. Uh, d- different movies. Tarantino did Death Proof. Yeah, Rodriguez did his own. There was one film that was fucking shite, man. It was about a load of lads on motorbikes. Um, it, it came out at the same time. It was like, ah, oh, fuck. Can someone tell me? It was. It came out at the same time, and it, it was about a, just a fucking gang of motorbike dudes and Vince. What's his name? Oh, uh, yeah, Michael Madsen was in it. 
And I just watched the first 15 minutes of it, and your man who who written and directed it and acted in it just loved himself too much, and it just looked like a lad who was going through a midlife crisis. What was, it wasn't the Hell's Angels. Escape from Insert City. Let me see. I'll, I'll tell you what it was. I'll tell you what it was. Michael Madsen. Under movie. Movie of lads on bikes. Hell right. That was it. You were close, man. You were close. Geez, Shawnee and Torrington. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Can't be fucking easy in these days. Wild hogs. Hell ride or wild hogs. You make the decision. Uh, with George, I saw a clip of Tropic Thunder with Tom Cruise, hip hop dance, and now I need to watch the movie again. Yeah, the last time I seen that was when it came out, but I remember thinking it was fucking hilarious at the time. Uh, another film that was great at the time, I watched it in the cinema, was Our oh, Christian Mate. Thank you very much. A cup of coffee. Hey, what are you going to do about it? Hey, what are you going to do? It's, it's a fucking tough record out there. But this uh, this other movie, what was. Oh, my fucking brain, man. I'm wrecked. The day I had my, the, the, my son is three and a half, and he's just at the stage where he's relentlessly cheeky. When I went to pick him up from Dacre, he just pissed off. And I was like, all right, we'll see how long it takes for you to, to come back. And uh, about half an hour later, I had to go and pick him up. And then we went for some sushi. And he took all those little sushi bowls out and just spilt soy sauce into the mall. And uh, I, was, I was hungry at the time, stressed out, and he just... Yeah, kept leaving the shop and stuff. And then later on when we were taking the dog for a walk, he just takes the mickey out. And I was like, it was right outside an apartment, outside the door. And I was like, can you please pee on the bush? Nah, right on the doorstep of someone down the road. So yeah, the people probably think we're the most nuts family. Actually, uh, the sister-in-law was saying her friend was having dinner at some apartments back there. And they were like, yeah, my... Uh, yeah, that, that's where uh, my sister lives there. And then they were like, oh, that family. <laughs> it wasn't from the fucking windy shock duration. Let me see where we look. Oh, yeah, that was the one. Pick of Destiny. We watched that in the cinema, had a great laugh. And then immediately I was like, ah, oh, it was a great film. But I wouldn't give a fuck if I ever watched it again. So uh, I don't know what that means. Jack has 3D, such a strange movie going experience. Actually, we went to see that in the cinema, Jonah. And uh, Owen met Johnny Knoxville. He was like, I'm going to really ask Johnny a, a question he's never been asked before. So he asked him, What was it like being a jackass? <laughs> the conversation was pretty much done at that stage. <laughs> What's this about? Uh, about Top Gun. So I thought, was, uh, wasn't that produced by uh, Simmons, a crazy producer in, in Hollywood? He, he apparently would just ring lads up and go, hey, you fucking fired, you piece of shit. Apparently he died of a coke overdose on the toilet while having a shit. Adam Maher, how you doing? Are you originally from Ireland or England? Because I can't tell if you have a really good Irish accent or if you've developed an English accent. Right. I'll tell you. Cactus Rider. Thank you very much, mate. I appreciate that, big man. Glad to see you doing a video again. Will you be streaming again any anytime soon? Again, like I will do. Yeah, I've just I've just got to get the time and, and headspace. Um, see, I'm so fucking tired at the moment. I can't even remember what I just said, which is it just shows that I need a good kip. Fuck, was I saying? Someone remind me of what the hell I was just talking about there, please. Please. Pissing on the doorstep is an alpha move. Good boy you got there. It's kind of thinking that at the same time as well. Um, oh, yeah, that was it. Cheers for that. See, Adam, fair play. So my parents are born in... My par parents are born and raised in Swinford. And they moved over to England in the 60s because there was obviously fuck all going on in Ireland. And I was born in Merseyside, just across in a place called Birkenhead, across from... Cross from Liverpool, like, do you know what I mean? And moved over to Ireland when I was 12. So pretty much Irish with an English accent. So that's the crack there. Uh, culturally, I'm, I'm, you know, and then I've been in Sweden so long now as well. 
that uh, I'm kind of I, I would identify as being Irish with an English accent and I've absorbed some of the Nordic culture as well so I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm all over the place Maisie Beat, David Wells, I tell you, fucking Graham Russell knows the crack, mate. Going down, getting a pair of Sergio Tachini's tracksuit bottoms from Stanley Dot Marcus. Are you a Darren Till fan? Uh, he seems like a sound guy, man, to be honest with you. My cousin watched Top Gun like twice every day from 92 to 95. I haven't been able to watch that film since. Funny enough, I met Tom Cruise about six years ago in Dublin. Just out for a few pints, man. And... When I when I met him, uh, we were being introduced, and they're like, uh, "This is Mark Maloney, Tom, and he he's got a film out this year called The Hardy Bucks Movie." And she's like, "Great, what's the film about?" I was like, "Well, Tom, to put it to put it like this, our film is probably about the coffee budget of oblivion." And I said, "Tom, my wife loves you." He goes, "What's your wife's name?" So like, Tanya. He goes, "You tell her I said hello," and I did. And she was like, "Oh, Tom Cruise said hello." Do you know what? In fairness, fun. Tomorshin Cruise. Very nice guy to meet. He made time to meet everyone along the uh, the premiere. It was, it, was a, it was a big fucking deal. Do you remember that time where that lad in Balls of Steel squirted him with a microphone? It was like, uh, it's like the film's great. It's got comedy, it's drama, it's, it's, it's engaging, it's intense. And he goes, just squirts him in the face. He goes, ah! kind of laughed in the beginning, but then had to take it seriously. He's like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? You're a jerk. You're a jerk. Why would you do it? No, 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 no. But why would you do that? <laughs> and you use some like Scientology style body language and grabbed him by the hands. He was like, Why would you do that? I give you an interview and this is how you treat me. <laughs> You're a jerk. And then it was, I love the way there's people like fawning over him, giving him, giving him like towels and stuff to dry himself off. My father met Tom Cruise once and said the same thing. He's apparently really nice. Yeah, he is. Fair play to him. He's a good, he's a good ward. What do you think of Ryan Tuberty? I'll tell you a story about Ryan Tuberty. Back in, um, I think, 2008, me and Ryan Tuberty 69 each other. No, I, that, that was, sorry, I, I didn't, didn't mean to say that. Um, no, I had a toothache and I had to go down to Galway to get my tooth looked at. But I'd taken these pills called Zydol. And I remember the two times I'd taken it before when I was a teenager, I just threw up all day, violently sick, and had like a fever. But I was like, hmm, maybe I'm older now. It might work again. So I took two of these pills and Tom Cagallan, the boo, he came down to go away with me. And I started feeling dreadfully fucking sick by the time I got to Tune, kept driving, and I was down Merchant, Merchant's Road. And I had to pull up to the side of the road in traffic, open the car door and go, Bleh! and I could see the two fucking tablets of just lying in the puke. Uh, and then after that, getting the two sorted out, I was walking down along the car river. And I heard loads of people going, fair play to you, Ryan, fair play to you, fair play to you. And I was like, what's going on here? And it was Tuberty, he was walking down, walking down the road. And I said, how are you doing, Ryan? How are things? We're from the Hardy Books. Hardy Books, I haven't heard of you. It's like, oh, yeah, it's a comedy show on YouTube. Apparently it's pretty popular. He's like, great, can't wait to get you on the show. Still waiting, Ryan. RT would never get us on the Late Late Show because we're too, too fucking dodgy. What do you think of South Park coming out of the closet? I haven't seen it, but my mate Danny Moher thinks it's very, very funny. Uh, Alan, do I remember Italian 90? I do remember Italian 90, and it was a magical time. I remember after Italy bet Ireland drawing glasses and moustaches on the Italian players on the TV. My dad came in and go, what the fuck are you doing, son? Uh, uh, drawing on the fucking television. It was a bit daft because people moved, you know? John Smith, Martin lad, what's the story of the Hardy books? What's it going to take to get a new series? John, I don't know, mate. Everything is just fucking up in the air, man. Do you know what I mean? How's, how's Tom doing? I met him randomly one day in Castle Bar. I heard a good story from a guy called... Um, fuck, what's his name again? Paddy... Fucking Paddy, who owns uh, Grouse Lodge. This recording studio, it'll come back to me. And he owns the Waxwork Museum in in Dublin. And he told me once, Michael Jackson was was in the car with him because he was he was recording his last album in Grouse Lodge, and they were going through Crumlin along the canal. 
and uh, Michael had the mash gun and all that. And he was like, hey, Paddy, I like this place. I'd like to buy a house here. And he's seen some lad in the tracksuit on a bike, and he was just waving, going, hi. And he goes, the fuck are you looking at, you fucking muppet? It was just window up. Rollies are fags, man. Fucking rollies. Any given bun day. The fuck's Paddy? Hey, um, Fikra, Paddy Dunning. Fair play to you. Paddy Dunning. I was going to say Paddy Cullivan, but he's the lad from the Late Late Show band. But uh, that was a true story, man. Was watching the Dublin Lansdowne Road Ride last night. It's real stuff. Oh, that's when all those Combat 18... Oh, my fucking combat. I, I, uh, fucking cause a rock. They were just ripping the seats off and throwing shit down. Oh, you yeah, Emer. Is it fucking Emer from Gemlish Den, is it? Cheers for the camping gear, Emer. Your pure sound. Shween it up, yeah. And we also have Jade is in the house. How are you, Jade, man? How are you, Jade? Adam Maher. Snooze or Ooh. Snooze, man. If they sold this shit in. Ireland, no one would be smoking. There'd just be lads just cramming it all on. Going, fucking cool, man. I've got fucking snooze. It's what I had, but dear. Fucking Petty Sweeney knows the crack. Petty Sweeney. Snooze all day, brah. Emer knows well the crack. You're going for lovely pints here. Lovely pints. Emer down in the chat. Say hello to Emer. She's fucking sound. She's got all the gear. She knows how Twitch works. How many instruments do you play? I'm handy enough on the piano, but it's a lot of guesswork, and I don't play it regularly enough to be that good. But if I if I had like a two weeks full run at it, I'd be I'd be all right on that guitar. Bit of, again, I don't own a bass. I wouldn't mind getting a, just a cheap bass to knock around in. Um, I, I'm, I'm at the stage now where I'll, I'll pick something up after a couple of days. Uh, Schmoke, if you got him, says Daniel. Howie Martin, Sweden been sound. The lockdown carry on. NP has to be done. It's uh, yeah, it's been salmon. Quite, I quite like it. What I miss? Any stateside stories yet? Uh, stateside man. He, I, I'm supposed to book some tickets. He gave me his uh, card details and passport. He wants me to book tickets over to to our, to Sweden. But we're not allowed to leave Sweden. We're we're stuck here. Billy Joel, piano man job, best lager in the world. Lager, you say? If you go down to Vistrums, it's Bitburger. But uh, I probably I like uh, Pilsner Urkel or Budvar. That'd be my kind of stuff. But I'd be uh, I'd be I'd be a great man for the old IPAs. But since since hanging out in the Irish pubs, man, fucking Bulmers, man. You know what I mean? Down in Connemara, we call it Schween. I'm on pills for cheeky boys. Bit burgers class. Fucking Lee Murphy knows the crack with the fucking power drink. Wash your hand, Adam. There's how you get pink eye, bud. Stateside is fucking hilarious. You know, like, I re RTE really missed a trick or a legal suit with getting uh, Stateside his own show. Imperial Stout. Melody Pugh. How are you, Melody? Imperial Stout. Who does that? Imperial. B Bittenberger is good stuff. All this talk of pints would make a man very, very thirsty. Favourite U2 song? Uh, New Year's Day, I think, will be David. Well, fair play to you, man. You're, you're throwing some good questions out there. Keep them going, man. Keep them going. Yeah, Imperial equals extra boozy. I fucking like that, man. I like that. Yeah, uh, when I was over in the States living in New York in 2011, I was drinking uh, Mike's Hard Lemonade, it was lemonade for hard dudes. That was that was all right. I quite enjoyed that. Uh, what else was a favorite Oasis song? Oh fucking hell, man! Fika and David head to head in the fucking questions. See, I, when when someone says like, "What's your favorite?" I can't narrow it down, but at a cursory glance of the Rolodex of memories, favorite Oasis song would be Wonderwall. <laughs> Columbia, yeah, definitely Columbia. White Claw, I believe White Claw are in Ireland now. They're making a dent in the drinks market. Favorite Beatles song would be um, Rodney Says You're Gay. Tell fucking Rod to fucking send a comment. Hey, fucking Marty Boy. Marty Boy. Finn Harps. Was just thinking, would Love and Eric Andre style show on RT or Ali G exposing politicians? Jonah, you know, I, uh, I went and pitched a thing. Like a Hardy Bucks chat show. 
admittedly to the wrong department, but uh, they weren't interested in it. It was going to be great crack. It was going to be like every every one of the Hardy Books characters had their own segment in the show, and there was a thing called the Wheel of Krull, and we just had some lad dressed in a red suit wearing a like a Mexican style wrestler's mask. He was like the Stig from Top Gear, and no one knew who he was. And the gauntlet was whoever doesn't matter who it landed on. So you could have Michael D. Higgins on. And if it landed on Michael D. Higgins, it's like, Michael, I'm sorry, mate, you've got to wrestle Krull. So you take Krull out of his cage and he would wrestle Michael D. Higgins. And, and it, it wouldn't be like a, a piss about, it'd be a proper intense wrestle, dropping the soap jab. Have you heard that Oasis song, Gold Soundtrack, called Who Put the Weight of the World on My Shoulders? Catchy tune. I don't think I have, Sean, to be honest with you. I heard White Claws taste like static. Aren't white claws just like white wine spritzer in a half litre can? Michael D is a bummer. <sighs> OMG. Tyson versus Holyfield 3. Man. What's the crack with Tyson? Is he, is he, who's he going fighting? Because I meant to check that out, but I didn't. Didn't. He fucking will. Get out of it. Got to check this out, man. That would be... Uh, would be a big payday for those lads. See if this is a real deal. A good chance it'll happen. Is it going to happen? Iron Mike. Let's see what Iron Mike has to say on Talk Sport. Tyson versus Evander Holyfield 3. Iron Mike says, that would be awesome. As long as it raised money for charity. Mike Tyson... Mike Tyson said a trilogy fight with Van der Holyfield would be awesome as the heavyweight legend looks to make a comeback. He still looks in good shape, man. I wouldn't want to take a right hook off him. Iron Mike has been getting in shape at the age of 53, posting videos on social media showing he still has some ferocious speed and power. You don't forget that kind of thing. Like, that's pure muscle memory. He's in brilliant shape, man. 53. Holyfield also announced his intention to return to the boxing ring at 57 with a potential third clash between the pair mooted. Tai Soon admitted he would love to get back in the ring with his old adversary and raise some money for charity. I should he get a few bob himself, like. He told TMZ, I'm just having fun, looking good and showing off my new body and stuff. Anything is possible, and my ego is starting to get elated and stuff, but we will see. There's a lot of people out there that need help, and something like this could help a lot of people who are in need of help. That's what I've embarked on, a life of charity. So I know if me and Evander would get in the ring, it would be awesome for charity. Can you imagine me and him going in the ring together, our enemies? That would be brilliant, man. That would be one of the best things I'd seen all year. And by fuck, we could do some good shit this year. You know what I mean? Put up Stateside's rant. <sighs> Stateside's rant was epic. Tommy Tiernan is a buff. What's a buff? Because he's in good shape. Uh, possible, jo possibly John Fury. Have you all seen Mike Tyson's Mysteries cartoon? Good shite there. Is that one is with Scooby Doo and the, and the boys? Or did I just fucking dream that one night? You would kill it. You would kill it on Tommy Tiernan and do it. Yeah, it'd be good crack to go on the Tommy Tiernan show. But he'd probably be saying like, so Martin, what have you been up to lately? I'd be like, <laughs> you don't want to know. Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Is that happening again, is it? I think it is. I want to see fucking... If Tyson's fighting Holyfield, Holyfield want a pair of earmuffs on or something. Oh, dude, I was giggling like a schoolgirl watching it. Norm MacDonald is... A, Norm MacDonald's in it as well. Norm MacDonald is, is one of the funniest comedians there is. Like when he was talking about Steve Irwin and, and the crocodiles talking about how Steve Irwin died and he's like... He goes, uh, who killed him? And he's like, ah, you don't want to know. Mr. T, if he took cocaine, would make like Tyson. We should see Sylvester Stallone versus M Mr. T again. Club Lang. Yeah. Well, do you know what, fellas? I'd have to wrap it up now. Justice for Stateside. <laughs> I really should ring him and just say, do you mind jumping on this? You know what? I'll ring him. McGregor versus Tyson. Do you know what? I'd fucking love to see that. 
in, in a boxing match. That I, I would I would actually pay good money to see that. I would pay good money to see a UFC 25 with Stateside versus SIM card. The Hardy book, I mean, I've got a load of uh, Dara, as I said, it'll be up on Patreon and I'll read a bit of an excerpt on that one night. Maybe, uh, it depends on what night of the weekend. Or maybe I could do Thursday night as well. Let me see this now. Bear with me now. But uh, we do have uh, Peter Ganley coming on the podcast, so he'd be good crack. And if you have any questions to ask Peter Ganley, fucking throw them up there, hey. Throw them up. Let me see. Stateside, is it? Let's see. Give him a ring now, just to make sure he's all right. Rank the fame. <laughs> he's talking about McGahan again. He just wrote, May the Lord be with ugly Kevin. He's so ugly. I've more talent up my beautiful fat ass. If you don't believe me, read that. Now, food for thought, lads. Hi, I heard I'm on TV ads in Las Vegas and New York. American Netflix ads. And I'm in the mall. A lad from Tipperary told me. Rank the fame. I'd have to ring him and ask him about this... uh, this time I'm going to tell him that he's he's on he's on the line. Stateside justice. Punched by a fart. Did you actually see the, uh, McGregor jogging, David? On Jerry Springer. Call not answered. I'll give him another ring for the crack. Without giving his uh, number away. I can hear poor old Quarto in the back. Let me just get Quarto. Lift up though. You don't like it when he when he gets lifted up. Start the reactor. Open your mind. Quarter lives. He's a good dude. You're a good dude. Yeah. Wow, look at this plumage, man. How's Uncle Mick? I haven't, st- I haven't spoken to him in a long time. He who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man. Wasn't that um, Hunter S. Thompson before Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? It ain't dags. This lad is actually, this month, he's five. Should we have a birthday party for you? Should we get him a, a birthday cake with me? Mm. Check out these. Wow. Yes, I have the best of teeth. My daughter actually brushed his teeth recently. She did a great job. Great job with the teeth. You chill there, Quato. Fair enough. His, his real name is Malish, which is uh, Russian for the baby. Like it, It's crazy to think this dude was um, with his siblings and they were just found on a rubbish dump in a bag in St. Petersburg. Poor old skin. Huh? One man's trash is another man's treasure. And by fuck, he's some treasure. Now he's a good old dog. There was uh, an African gentleman asking me for directions today and the kids had run off and I had him on a long lead and I'd forgotten. Like, he, he just barks at anybody and he was asking me directions and he went for him and I went, 
I'm sorry, mate. My dog, my kids are crazy. My dog's crazy. I'm, I'm crazy as well. So, uh, but uh, I gave him the directions and bid him a good day. Why is Oshkin? But uh, it's just embarrassing moments like that with him. He barks at kids, fucking drunk people. Actually, he just barks at everyone, man. But I haven't really seen him bite anyone, so that's good. But it's, 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 he's not very good with kids, like kids he doesn't know. And it, which is, you know, it, it's a bit crap for the kids because they're like, oh, can we pet the dog? And I'm like, well, nah, I wouldn't want to chance it. He's a bit funny around kids, but collies are a bit. Led Zeppelin or Queen, Zepp all the way, man. Zepp all the way. Would love to see a Saturday night Zoom session with you when the three books left. Would be epic. Yeah, yeah I, I could do that. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. And then I could make that into a podcast. Two birds, one stone jab. Uh, you wished my friend Dara O'Sullivan. All the lads got a great kick out of it. That was recently was a con. Because I, I did a, I did a couple. I haven't I haven't been on Instagram much lately. I haven't been on any social media. I just went on a, went on a, a camping trip during the week, and I might take the kids away camping as well, just to to do something in the summertime. LBC job. GTA four or five. Do you know what? I kind of GTA after Vice City because it was just go and pick up my laundry. Whatever you do, don't crash this car. So you're just driving around. I mean, if I wanted to drive around not crashing a car, I'd just do that in real life. Do you know what I mean? Do my own laundry. Two birds get stoned on the same joint job. It does help in a way. Yeah, he, he is a le legit rescue dog. All, all of my dogs have actually been... The first dog I ever had, Bertie, my sister got him for me and mum for... He's the one who's in the, the original Hardy books, but he was old then. He was old. He was he was given away by a friend. My sister was in school. My second dog, Toby, who was probably one of the, the, the nicest dogs I've ever known, very loyal and, and looked like a barrel, and he would always eat the other dog's food. And we used to get these brandy dog food tins, and he'd just open the tin and just go, <coughs> and just a cylinder of jelly and meat would come out, and he'd have two of them. Oh, fuck. Do, 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 do. Oh, Tommy Stateside. Tommy, 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 shit side. How are you doing, baby boy? How are you, Martin? How's things? Not too bad, mate. I have to tell you, uh, I'm doing a live stream, and I wanted to ring you to to ask you permission. Just to, some fans wanted to ask you some questions, so I said I'd ring the man himself. I don't want to answer any questions, Martin. I'm just having a few drinks here. What are you, what are you drinking? Just having a... Heineken? 16 Heineken. Ah, I fucking knew it'd be Heineken. But, like, man, if I had a few pinners on me, like, or something, I'd have a bit of weight for later, like, but you won't probably be up later, will you? I might be, Tom. I don't want any cheeky cons, like, you know. What time will you be up to, Mark? Uh, two, maybe. That's the story what I'm hearing about these ads, man, in, in the States. Which ads are these? Some lad told me, man, he's seen videos or so. He heard something that there was TV, Hardy Books, Netflix ads on in New York now and all over the place. Yeah? Yeah, well, that's what I heard, man. He's not bullshit. I know him for 11 years. Like, I'll do a bit of research. Nice, but there's something to do with Hardy Books now, and apparently we're all in ads now all over Netflix or something in the States. Really? I do not know anything about that. Uh, first, I'm sure no one tells me anything these days, like. But man, no one tells me nothing either. Apparently, it's fucking massive in America now. What to say here? And you know yourself, man. Like, oh, it's something to do with Netflix, man. It has to be something to do with Netflix is advertising the Hardy Box or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I actually believe you don't know anything about it, man. Well, I don't really, to be honest with you. But like. It's on Netflix, and uh, first of all, I'm to right, it's in America. Yeah. So apparently now there's ads on in Las Vegas and New York. But I know you probably think someone's taking the piss, but they're not, man. Hardy Books is being advertised in the States. Man. Fair enough. Fair enough. So um, that's actually, mass that's massive more fame, you know? Mm. Well, that's good. You couldn't ask for more fame, man. That's fucking class, isn't it? And were you in the videos as well, were you? 
The what man? Were you in the uh, were you in the video as well? Apparently this lad from Tipperary is working up until he said that I was in all a lot of the ads. He said, Lad, why you on ads all over fucking Las Vegas and anymore? I said, Must be something to do with Netflix or something. I said, I have no clue. I don't look any of look up any of that stuff. Like, and you know what, Tom? The bastards. That's insane, man. That's that's twice more fame. It is twice more fame. And you know what? Let me tell you something else. The bastards in Sweden didn't put us on Netflix. The bastards, huh? Yeah, but man, it's I don't care about Sweden. It's on in America. That's the main fucking thing, man. But I live here, though, Tom. I, I just wanted to get a bit of fame. You know what I mean? I wanted to, to be able to go into man, restaurants and get free food. Started, shit. It's probably fucking... I don't know how many people are watching it, but fucking hell, man. I wouldn't exactly say it broke America, but there's definitely big fame over there now with, with Hardy Bucks and Netflix, man. Do you know, the funny thing is, Tommy, the funny thing is, yeah. if fucking... Kim Kardashian was watching it one night and was like, who are these fucking lunatics? It would Is be... this for a fact, man? Well, yeah. Are you serious? Well, I mean... Uh, that... yeah, where did you get the proof from? No, this? no, no, no. All I'm saying is that would that's all it would take is just for someone that big just to, just to put a tweet out and say, you've got to check these lads out. And before you know it, there would be at least 75 million people... Do you know what, Tom? RTE missed, RT missed the trick with not having the stateside show. Exactly, man. I could have been, I could have been awful big, and I still could. Still could. Any Do day. You kind of stinging ends, man. Whereabouts? Well, not around the shoulder, kind of uh, chest area, but not in the heart. Just kind of under the breastbone to the very. Like under your rib cage, kind of, you know. It could, your rib cage. it could be a pinched nerve, Tom. Or, or, uh, the doctor said to me a few weeks ago that's just nerves, Tom. He said it's nothing to do with the heart, it's literally. Who didn't you get the MOT the done? It, I got the heart test and it came up as accident. So he said it's just now nerves, Tom. He said you're just punching nerves, Tom, to much your weight, you know. Hey, you have the heart of an old pony. What have you got? I've got an extremely good heart, man, and of of everything. Because, man, it's nothing to do with the heart. My heart could be 100%, but, you know, when you're, you're overweight, you can hit nerves, you know what I mean? Mm. You just feel the little pinches every now and again. But what would you expect from a man at 26 stone, bro? You know, I'm, I'm a big guy, like. Yeah. Do you remember the time you came to Sweden and you compared yourself to the block of flats and you said... There was not much difference yeah, in your house. Yeah, I actually remember that like yesterday, but like, I can tell you everything I said. I must get on to the tickets crack, Tom. Apparently, uh, no one's allowed to come to Sweden yet. But that's what I was thinking, man. There a week ago, was it two weeks ago or something, or a week ago? I was talking to you about it. I don't actually think, man. I, 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 I can, you can book them flights probably until November. Ah, oh, yeah. Because it would be a bit of crack if I did come over, you know, and have a few drinks and. We could have a few joints too, you know, and have a bit of crack and smoke a few cigarettes and just like old times, man, have a bit of crack. You oh. know, and as Jade Elvis would say, it would have been a perfect could, time for a US live tour. I could stay on, the, on that boat too, man. Yes, you could. And we could make a documentary about it called Stateside's Boat Trip. Yes, man. And I could have, I'd be awful handsome and I'd have my shades on and I'd be just so, so big and, and, and I could show Kyrish the moment. And I've awful bad news, man. What? It's about my woman. It's not about her, though. Um, her cousin was killed in a, in a motorbike accident. Monsoon season job? No, she was only 19. Her cousin, her first cousin, she was very close to her. They were like fucking sisters, you know. She was very close to her and her mother and father is in Dubai now at the moment. They're on yeah. like 38, 39. They were, they were working and they can't come over to the funeral or the fires. Like they can't travel the same as myself. Like I can't travel anywhere. And uh, apparently she was just doing 40 or something on the scooter. Raining, and was it? And the lunatic was coming at around 80 or 90 straight into a fire trip about two miles into the air down. Broke all every bone in her body. Killed instantly. Well, it, and uh, yeah. here's the funnier thing, Marie. 
Irish used to be ringing me and uh, she'd be in the background and they'd be drinking in the background and they'd be in the house and everything playing tunes and because when the Philippines gather together, Martin, it's not like here, there could be a hundred of them in the house because there's so many relations and aunts and uncles and cousins and it's crazy, man, the amount of people over there, but she was kidding. like, there's 120 million people there in a small island, man. It's like all cramped in together and I think it's every few hours someone has killed there. There's too many people and too much traffic, man. It's crazy. She was only 19, man. And uh, she was killed instantly. And the woman now was in bits and she's crazy. She's talking, you know, she's, she's too, it's just so sad, man. And uh, they're at the wake. They were at the wake yesterday and she's getting buried now Wednesday. Catholic job. Catholic job. Yeah, Catholic job, man. Most people over there are Catholics, you know. Mm. You can you believe that man? The hop I got her best friend and her cousin, like a sister to her. And like Irish is twenty eight nearly, but she kind of grew up with her. She you know she followed her growing up. And they were very close, and you know they were just close family, you know. And she was killed instantly. I thought she might be thirty, but apparently she's only nineteen, a young fucking girl. Like sorry to hear that, Tom. Send me condolences. I mean, I can't, I can't get the image out of my head, man. The, the killing she got, like, some lunatic was calling in a car and knocked her off the scooter. Doesn't bother thinking about me. Uh, but tell me this, any, any any good crack with you lately? Any um, any good news? Just to lighten um, the load. Not, lighten the load. Not really good news, man. Like, it's just, it's just, it, you wouldn't exactly call it bad. Well, apart from the woman's causing getting killed, so everything is... Well, we've done the house up now at the moment. Like we're renovating the house, the sit room, the back kitchen, and the uh, and the other thing, kind of a smaller kitchen. You Tell know. me this: Do you still have the poster Brad Pitt in the hallway? Um, in my house, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, man. I've got loads of pictures of me on the wall and Brian Kennedy and Elvis and Stateside and, and well, all together. Loads of pictures. No, just all in different spots. Like I don't really have a big house, man. If Everything is average here. Average rooms, average hallway, average kitchen. It's not small. It's I'll just tell you one thing, Tom. Size. No average stateside, though. Big garage. No, I'm not an average. No. I put up a class shed there for a snooker table. And you know what I'm going to do with this house, man? This is a private house. My mother bought about 15 years ago. I'm going to get in a conservatory onto this house. Ooh. And it's getting built. Your brother-in-law, and I'm going to get... He's a builder. He's, he built his own house. I'm going to try and pay him and... We're going to put up a conservatory here. Nice. In the next maybe 18 months, it's been a long, long time away yet, though, you know. But I've always wanted a nice conservatory to have a few drinks in and bring Irish over it and just kiss her in the conservatory all night long. Just hold it tenderly in the heat of the night. Yeah, I'll fucking shift her to death, man. I'll, I'll shift her a new asshole. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what, what else is new, man? Have you, uh, have you been watching McGahan's uh, TV show? No, I haven't, man. I just, I'd be down in the room watching TV at night and that fucking retard. I, I'd actually usually stay in, in my own room because I have Sky in my own room. And there's only the RTE and satellite on in my uh, my mother's room, but she doesn't really sleep in there. She sleeps in a different room now. Her legs is bad. The bed is too low for her and... But um, I just I call I just crack up when I see that piece of fucking scum filth. Keep it, on the telly. keep it tidy, no keep it tidy. He's no talent. I beat him seven hundred billion nil at snooker. My better driver than him. I'm possibly funnier than him, and I'm definitely a better actor than him. So I never ever wanted to do his fucking shit that he does on the telly. I'm stateside. I do my own fucking stuff. Okay, I don't need to copy him. You know what I think would make a great TV show? What, man? What do you think? You versus McGahan in loads of different tasks. Do you know what I mean? So, like, there'd have to be, like, an assault course of just jobs. So, like, the two... Do you know what he says on, his, on, on the ad? Do you know Sinead Kennedy, the blonde one? But, you know, that's who he's doing the show with. She's doing one the streak and all that shit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when can I, and when can I get a pint? Number one cocksucker, you wouldn't drink more than six cans anyway. I drink 75 cans more than that because I'm having 18 tonight. And number two, when can I get a pint? Yeah, cocksucker, yeah. 
you think you're great coming to a pub, you wouldn't have the fucking confidence to go into a pub. Yeah. What about Chris? Correct. What about Chris? Who? Oh. How about Tordoff? Where, where's he these days? I don't know where that fucking piece of shit is. I fucking mug him. You steal his money? I fucking rape him, I will. <laughs> um, who else? Uh, any any word from Peter, the boys? Peter Cassidy? Yeah. I haven't heard from that fucking bad man, and I, I don't know when last I heard of Peter. The last time I was down here when we were playing snooker, you're it's looking good, at it. Times what, was... what are we now? July, August, September, October. I say it's nearly two years since I seen Pete, man. I was even younger back when I seen Pete. Yeah. I don't know where Pete Cassidy is. I don't know where anyone is. And I never fucking speak to Sam in any way. I think it deserves a super chat at that. least. Like, as far as I know, that fucking retard Stephen Kelly, when I get him, he's dead, man. I'll give him a brain hemorrhage. I'll give him a real brain hemorrhage. Do you, uh, is this because of the time he didn't pick you up to go to Mullingar? But then he said he yeah, would, I'll but it's too late. Because you, you broke the phone that time. It. I'll never, ever, ever forget it. That's a lad from Mullingar. I forget his name, man. He's a kind of a redhead dude. He knows you, man. Uh, I forget his name, but he's sound. He's big. He, he doesn't have Milner. No, what's his name again? He's a sound man. I think he's a student as well. Like he's about 28, 29, 30, I don't know. But um, but I he's forget his name, man. He's I, I, he's from Mullen Gary. He knows you well. I think he stayed at his house before. A redhead book. Yeah. What's his name again? McGahan. No, 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 no. I don't know, no, no. I don't know who this... I forget his name, man. It's so long since I spoke to him. He said to me, you having a shite, Tom? Your fucking... Kelly was up there that night with Martin in, in that bar. I don't know the name of it. Columbia. And uh, the Crown or something or whatever you call it. Columbia. My phone broke in Charlestown that day, Martin, outside the hairdressers and fell in bits on the ground. The earphones caught the door. I was three hours waiting in the fucking phone shop and I walked up and down to the gateway and I didn't see you there and he must have known I wasn't, couldn't, I wasn't there and knew to go. It was nothing but a disaster. A rotten, smelly, rabies, cock-sucking, AIDS, firm and shit disaster. And that's what happened. And it never happened to me before. Of course, I'm not superhuman. There's a fucking first time for everything. And that fucking night was fucked up and I'm still raging over it. But do you remember the time when you came on stage with us in the 2009 Bulmers International Comedy Festival in the Yes, it Academy? was extremely fucking popular back then. Hey, you know what I would really love to know? Remember the time you were on X Factor? Yeah, well, I don't want to talk about that crap. Yeah, but I was just, whatever happened to the video? Because I tried finding it on YouTube, but it's, it's gone, man. It was called X Factor for Tommy or something. My sister put it up and some the coins friend put it up. He's, and uh, it just vanished, man. Actually, that had about 20, 30,000 views, you know? Yeah, I know, man. It was, it was, it was because, because they didn't know me as Tommy Miller. They knew me as Stateside. So they're like, oh, God, Stateside was on X Factor. That, this is really going to get a lot of views. I did get a good few views, to be honest with you. Dude, yeah. Let's face it, I, I am actually a well-known man, dude. Yeah, anytime I look at you, you've got some, some bell called Tom Bleasby and another one called Tommy Ludford Six Chairs Challenge, but I don't see the one of Tommy Miller, a.k.a. Stateside. Just a bunch of jerk-offs. It's called X-Factor for Tommy, like F-O-R, Tommy. My name's Tom, not fucking Tommy. Hmm. You know what, man? All I can see is all I can see is matte finished makeup wearing bellends, just with class haircuts and waistcoats and t-shirts, holding mics and just just loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of wankers. Hey, tell me this, Tom. What do you think of James Corden? I just think there's only one state man. To be honest with you. Hey, you got that one right. What do you think of James Corden, Tom? Martin. James Corden. Um, I, who's he? Is that the comedian fella? Yeah, <laughs> comedian. You can use that term loosely. He just go, he, 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 he just drives around in cars with celebrities, and they're not even singing, man. They're just pretending to sing. It's 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 demonic, evil, black magic, voodoo shit, man. You know what I mean? Where's he from, man? Ara, he's from some soft part of England somewhere with soft people come from. Mighty Dick, I'll rape him. Would you give him a bum, bumishment, would you? I'd fucking rape 
from yeah. What about that Jack Whitehall as well, man? He's another. F- you know what? If you you Who should. Who the fuck is this guy? He oh can suck mate. My fucking dick. Yeah, he, he's someone who uh, is. He's just. He's got family in the business, and he just got the leg right up into the. You know what I mean? He can fuck off a cunt. I fucking know what to tell him. And it turns out, no, Lauren Cabinet. You know what? Two men on my menu, and it's Kevin McCarthy is the one, the first one, and the fight was the second. Ooh. And you know what? I'll tell you something else. i tell you something else. All that James Corden shit, that carpool karaoke shit that he does for the Late Late Show over in fucking America. You know, when they're cruising around and yeah. they're all pretending to be driving around singing? Oh, man, I know who you're on about now. So he actually got a show called The Late Late Show. That's the one. Kind of yeah, girl. that's the one. He's a big, a big fucker. Like. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's a fucking retard, hey. <laughs> do you know what, man? I te- do you know what's going to sicken you even more? That bastard, that bastard gets millions and millions of views, right? And I'm talking millions of... And the fame is unrankable. Singing with the Chili Peppers and fucking that Lady Goo Goo and all those cunts, right? And I'll tell you this, he's not even driving a car, Tom. They're on the back of a trailer. Do you know what I mean? They're on the back of a fucking trailer. And they're pretending he's driving. What what does what do you think of that man? Please tell me, Tom. Please. Because first of all, he looks like a cocksucker. And second of all, them fucking pieces of white trash that's with him are nothing but fucking pieces of shit. And they're never going to be famous, really. There's only going to be one. There's only one man that was ever the most famous man that's ever lived is John Lennon and Elvis Presley. No one will ever beat their fucking records. No one will ever. Elvis Presley sold one fucking billion records, bro. What about Fat Boy Slim? That was big, man. You know, Fat Boy Slim was out before there was any YouTube or Facebook or any of that crap. You know, these are all these are all legendary bands, man. You see, the world is trying to say YouTube is taking over actual TV, but really and truly, what's happening is the vast majority of people on YouTube are retards because they don't know what real fame is. They, they think YouTube is really fame, but it's only people getting good laughs out of them, you know. What about Basically, Sugar Ray, Tom? Don't worry about it. Like, I mean, Hardy Bucks started on YouTube. Fair enough. That was yeah. fucking mass in 2009. I think you lads were filming before I even met you in 2007. But um, I just broke on the scene then in 2009, and I blew the show up, man. Do you reckon, I mean, can you imagine Hardy Bucks without Stateside? be the same Martin I'm not bragging but I don't think the show would be the same it wouldn't be the same you still have big massive views I mean I'm not taking that away from you you still have your human good acting but I just don't quite think it would be the same without the big guy stateside that is a very very fair point that is a very fair point it's just I'm, it's just I do very regular normal good scenes you know Jonah Anderson once said it would be empty without stateside and who is she man there's a man called Jonah Anderson oh I'm sorry to say Fiona or Fofono what's the name Jonah Anderson oh right that's a man's name obviously yeah what did he say man he said it would be empty without stateside in the hardy books what do you? Uh, is he famous himself? Ah, he's you know YouTube famous, I suppose. Um, Liam Murphy wants to know what you thinks of the dragon. What do I think of the dragon? Yeah, you and the dragon always gone well. Well, I mean, it was nice to work with him, and uh, he is a funny guy, and he's actually quite a good actor. But the thing about the Wayne Lynch Martin, if that's his real name, I haven't seen him in about. I don't think I've seen him in about seven years now. Yeah, he that guy is gone, Martin. I'm sorry to tell you, you you may never see him again. He lives in Australia now, I think. Yeah, but he's no spring chicken, bro. The guy is. Hey, you know, it's only about ten years on me. You know, I mean, 
I mean, I'm no spring chicken either, but the guy, you know, he was my age when he started Hardy Box. And that's back in 2000, uh, 2009 or something like that. So, um, Wayne is... Uh, the Dragon... But he only done the two series, man. He wasn't in... He was in the film, but he wasn't in series three, yeah. the uh, series where Brian Kennedy... He wasn't in series four. And he wasn't in exactly everything on YouTube. He was a big guy, probably a strong guy, maybe, but a wiry guy. I just don't know. He went to Australia and he was never to be seen again. And it was a shame what happened to him. I can't believe he gave his fame up to go to Australia. I'll never get over it. Oshin Campbell wants to know, do you reckon stateside was mistreated by the Viper on the show? How, how, what, what's the point in that? What does that mean? Like? As in, was the character cheeky to your character? How am I supposed to answer that? I fear the Viper, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Kevin Ian Murphy says, can you tell him that he has a nose carved by Michelangelo? Who said that, that, Martin? Kevin Ian Murphy. Who the fuck is that? Uh, uh, he's, he's an Irish lad. And, and Daniel Hertz, there's a lad from Alaska who said, stateside was a critical piece of the puzzle. Sure, we could have, ha we could have gotten the picture, but... It wouldn't have been complete, would it? What does that mean? Is in that you were a critical part of the Hardy books. Oh, yeah. Where is he from? Alaska. So he's actually from Alaska. Anchorage in Alaska, which was the expansion pack of Fallout 3, if you downloaded it. All right, man. Hmm. Uh, did he ever get his shoe back from the Sligo boys? Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. Do you remember I said, give me me fucking shoe. <laughs> what did you think of Shady Danley, Tom? That was you, man. Yeah, but what did you think of the character? Uh, class, man. But the, the thing is, though, there is gobshapes like that in real life. I'm not saying you're a gobshape, but that was some... Uh, that was cool, man. Like you played two characters, you know. Yeah, but a lot that of people, ass, a lot man. of people don't realize that the Viper or Chris played the Gimp in the uh, the scene. You look so you look so different, man. What is Shady Ganley? But you played such a great character, man. I don't know how you told us so well. You, you hit that right on the nail, man. Yeah. Well, you know you the crack the fucking, You hit the nail with the hammer. They're bang on, bro. That was fucking. That was serious. That was back in series three, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a good series. I wasn't. That was serious, man. That was my favorite series ever, man. Mm. It was, yeah, it was my mine too. To be honest with you, another series. Mine too. I'd probably, I, I guarantee, if we to do another series, one, I'd do the best. I'd actually put my life into it. I'd put my whole world of acting into it. I'd actually feel so much more experienced with all I've done in the past. I would actually give, man, I've around three grand now. I throw it all away just to get another series. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us do want to get back in and do another series, but there's a few of us who don't. So you do the oh, math on that. Oh, I know McGarren to do it. Well, that's fucking piece of cock. I'm very right him, by the way. He do it. Do it. But he has really good time for you, man. You know what I mean? It's like he's he's often stated. Why does he think he's such a superstar? Right? Uh, he's just playing the, uh, the he's just playing the the celebrity game. Do you know what I mean? He's he, he's managing his brand. I don't think he, I don't think he really cares if he's if he's. Who does he think he is? Like, who does he fucking think he is, man? But you know the thing is, if, if if you were having pints with him, you'd get on well. Do you know what I mean? It's just that. You know, he's not very good at keeping in touch. Martin. Martin, Martin, listen to me. I know of Kevin McGaffron, a.k.a. Sanford, met me in a pub. He'd say, how are you stateside? How are you Tom Miller? How are you getting on? I'd say, what's the crack, Kevin, or whatever. But there's something in deep in my mind, Martin. I don't know what it is. I think he thinks he's, 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 he's not better than me. If that's what you think, he's not better than me. I'm a better man than him, right? And I've got a better looking woman than him. And I've traveled all over Asia. So he can suck my balls, man. 
I'm a superstar. He's only a little star, okay? Interesting. Who has more pits out of Screech from Saved by the Bell or McGahan? Who has more what, man? Pits. Saved by the Bell, man. That was on 500 years ago. In the Renaissance time of the Enlightenment, or man, that was the nineties, the mid nineties. Did you uh, watch? What, who was your favourite Saved by the Bell character? Oh, um, it wasn't that Screech book anyway. But um, <laughs> was it AC Slater? Oh, uh, Zach, 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 Zach Morris, man, Zach Morris. He was, he was, he was, he was cool, man. He was, he was very, very good looking lad too. He was, he was definitely the best, I think. I'm kind of just getting flashbacks of his scenes, though. Daniel Hertzler brings in a very, uh, very salient point. I couldn't imagine being a part of something like you lads had and having the world asking for more, but having to bring so many moving pieces into play must be maddening. Man, do you not realize how big Hardy Box is in the States now? If we could get it to always sunny in Philadelphia level, then we're talking business. Or at least up there with Mr. Belding and Screech. Look, man, I think, hey. I think, you don't even realise how big the Hardy Bucks is in America, man. I'm getting people texting me saying they're watching it and, and everything, even Irish people are hearing stories. Oh, I know stateside well and to be other people texting them from the States saying, oh yeah, we watch Hardy Box here and people from Tipperary and everything. Do you know, Martin? Do you know what? I suppose in some ways it doesn't really help that I'm living in Sweden either, does it? Well, Sweden can suck my balls, man. Why didn't Sweden put it on Netflix? Well, it's, it, I think it was, all, it was only in English-speaking territories. I, th I think it's on in Israel. How many and countries, Martin? Just tell me now, how many countries is Hardy Books on and Netflix? Um, I think Canada, Dominican Republic, Israel, maybe South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, England, Ireland, Canada, and America. Maybe I've repeated Canada, I don't know. Mr. Brown, isn't that, isn't that more than enough? Like, what other shit old countries did even watch it? They're only there of the countries that would probably watch it. What if we were really big in Moldova? I mean, like, I'd love if it was big, man. Imagine if it got big in the Philippines. I think I think Chris is done. He's done with the Hardy Bucks now. I think he, he's moved on from it. He won't be moving on because I'll bully him. <laughs> he won't fucking move on. He'll move on when I say he moves on. He's doing another series and that's it. And then after that, I'll just fucking creep and he'll watch for him on the road. What will you do? I'd rape him. Don't think I'm not getting sex. I have the odd one night stands. I've got a beautiful girlfriend. I'll, I'm rising to the Philippines. I had sex 10 times a day. I literally rape him and say, how do you like that? You can't. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Maybe, maybe just ring him and ask him how he's getting on, man. Do you know what I mean? He might he might throw you in a couple of videos. Remember those old videos he used to put you in the, the modern warfare. The cocksucker, it, it probably said, "What you want, Miller? Why are you <laughs> ringing me? What you want, Miller?" Because what? Why are you ringing me, Miller? What? What you want? I'm like, um, what you mean? What do I want? I'll fucking come up there and kick you. Though know? I can't even say what I said, man. I can't ring him; it wouldn't be safe. Yeah, I'm sure we'll probably get it all together one day. Do you know what I mean? Come on, Martin. Uh, would you have Would you have a word to tell for that? Sure. Do you want to, do you want to say hello to him? Oh, go on, put him on. Will I put him on, Martin? Go on, so I got I got to hit the road soon, though. Yeah, I just see you. Didn't... Put up a word to Martin. He said he wants to talk to you for a second. Mark, yeah. yeah, I put him on now, Martin, right? Yeah, fair play. Hello, man. Tom, how are things? How are you getting on? I'm too bad. How are you? No, I'm all right. Struggling. Yeah. Struggling. Yeah, I was on the heels on the way. 
Yeah. Well, the weather the weather's not been the best here, but a couple of couple of sunny spells. Oh, it's fucking raining every day, Martin. <laughs> Nothing new there, then, yeah. no. Sorry. Nothing new there, no. No, but I'm after spending three weeks myself and a bloke doing out the kitchen there, and you're to the zero. Yeah, well, well, I bought I bought, it, I bought um, a kitchen unit and fucking hell, it runs into hundreds of pounds. Yeah, but it looks nice when it's done, though. Well, it's almost done now, man. And you know what Pete Cassidy but, would uh, say? It's only day. So it's only day or the day you buy it. I got a lovely fitted kitchen down in Stanty. She's a nice one now. So it's a five hundred pound, but I had to put another eight hundred for stuff. You know, for uh, work tops and all that. Yeah. I love the. And that, that, is it an oak finish? Is it? Sorry. Is, is she an oak finish, or is it a granite job? No, no, it's uh, it's all oak. Oh, nice! Can't go wrong with a bit of oak. No, no, your man is good at his job too. It's a lad uh, that son-in-law done it with me. And tell me this: is there much crack around the west these days? Oh, not a lot, Matt. And this, you know, this old, this old fire has freaked up a lot of things. Oh, tell me about it. Fucking nuisance. Oh, Jesus. How was it over there, the virus? Do you know what? I think the Swedes, they, they, they included all the people who died from it. And, and the Swedes love putting labels and uh, statistics into the mix. So they look like they're worse. But apparently the apparently there's 50... Are you with, are you with Owen now? No, no. I, Owen's in Ireland. Oh, no, I, I'm in Sweden at the moment. Oh, you were there, Matt. Right, I, I can't even get back if I want. It's very clear. Yeah. Well, if you want to come back now, would you have any problems? Oh, yeah, I'm not allowed back. I'm stuck here. Yeah, you're not. You will be one day. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, there's no rush. But uh, it, it, it's, you know, God forbid there'd be an emergency or something because... Uh, I'd say you'd yeah, like to come back for a while, would you? That'd be nice, yeah. You know, come back for it. See the family. Man. So I hope to God it doesn't come again, but I'm talking about a second one. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the look at the crack. Like when, when what's going to happen when cold and flu season starts? Like and people are getting coming down with That's the cold. Right. And, you know, it's it's just. There was a bloke telling me that the other day. Yeah. About the winter flu and shit. I didn't get an old job for it anyway, you know. Mm. What's up with that? Was all the fucking technology? When you think they got a vaccine for this, all the people that died. Yeah. Well, funny enough, I was talking to I was talking to a fella who's who's um one of his best friends is uh, is a doctor in a hospital, and he was asking him. He goes, "Well, what happened to all the people dying of strokes and heart attacks?" And the man yes. in the doc the doctor was saying, "You know, he works in uh, South." The, the, the emergency room in, in the the hospital in the south part of the city. He was like saying, you know, he's he's yeah. asking the man himself is asking where they all are. Like, all right. So I know what the hell's going on. Oh Jesus Christ, Matt was an awful thing that hit the world. Mm. Sure, I, I don't know why they just didn't close all the fucking flights from China like at the time. China was, be, I don't know, they were the cause of it. I think. Mm. I know they're blaming other countries. Yeah, I know what the hell. We, we won't know. We'll never know what happened there, to be honest. You won't be told either. No, you won't. Not at all, mad. No, no. And uh, I was. Do you ring up your family here? Yeah, I do. I, I once or twice a week. I must ring my dad as well. Your yeah, mother is here, isn't she? She is. Yeah. Sisters and all oh, that. That's good. Yeah. That's good, Dad, when you can talk to them, you know. Well, uh, well imagine if it was fucking 20 years ago, it would have cost you a fortune ringing back. But the funny oh, thing is, you'd appreciate a call back then, like, you know what I mean? Now it's free. You know, People you know, don't have the time yeah. to ring anyone anymore. And the heat over there must be warm, is it? Uh, 20 degrees today. 
We, 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 we did have a heat wave here about two weeks ago that was up to 32 degrees. I was, I was, I was out in Sasha met there last September. Yeah. It freaked me. I was only there for the week. I felt 35 degrees. 35 degrees? 35, and I said, yeah. In one sense, I was glad to get out of the heat. I can't take from a cheat that was without that, chess. Was it down in Portugal, was it? Portugal, yeah. So that was nice also. Um, what, what do you think of the food down there? Oh, jeez, the food was great in Fatima now. I couldn't afford to learn. Uh, and tell me this, did you have an old drop-in when you were there? Not for what you believe it, class of what? <laughs> hey, probably better off. The, the way for the food class of wine, and that was it. A, a few well, relaxers. It, it was all paid for anyway. Tell me this, are you, uh, uh, are you proud of uh, Tommy's fame? Oh, I do, I am, yeah. Yeah. He's done well in there now, you know. It's a pity it didn't continue. I know, yeah, for sure. It's the politics of it. You, might, you never know. You never know. Could happen, yes. Yeah. I think, I think you know, if there's people want to see it, people want to do it. Just trying to get... Then Darth Bubbles Bubble from Conquer, I can tell you again. Who's that? The, uh... Oh, what the hell do you call them? They're from Cork, I know, when I was done down there. The, the, the two hard okay, shots, is it? The, the young offenders? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I tell you... Yeah, did you hear this crack? They reckon the old bubonic plague is back in China. Yeah? So they say. They had it both of the way ahead of the man away. Yeah. I wouldn't be gone on them now too much. Yeah, but uh, it's how much I hear there, man. In Sweden. Yeah, that was a good few actually. Be that far out in Hollywood, there wouldn't be that many now with the virus. But he's a good few out. Oh, there would be. Yeah, uh, that's there is. What, what? With a chance of a lot of flights, you know. They they leave it up to people to 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 go out if they want. To do with the twelve people, not to go, but it's up to themselves. Yeah. But they can have to come back here again. They have to go go work, go away. They can't have been in the house for two weeks. Mm. They have to stay away from the home or something for two weeks. It's just to mix it up a bit. Tell you, man, I'd love to see the end of it. I don't know about you, I would. Oh, I'm sick of it now at this stage. Sick of it. Sick of it, so Every man. time you put the TV on, all they're talking about, is it? I mean, what the hell, what other stuff is going on out there that they're not reporting on? I swear I was hijacked to the cops. Where are you going? Or what are you doing? And I took the fuck and he didn't make it one out. Mm. Yeah. You know? Well, uh... I'll, what is the law? What's the law like there with that? Yeah, they are the all right. You can come and go as you please. In the beginning, it was uh, no one knew what to expect, like so. Everyone was buying pasta. Yeah, and... There's a lot of stuff open up here, man. Yeah. There's pubs and shops and hot, every hotels, a few. Well, I was talking to a guy the other day who said he had it. He had it for three weeks, and he, and I said, "How did it feel?" And he said, "It was like it, it was as if his blood was taken away." And uh, yeah. And they'd replaced it with oil. That's how he felt. Yeah. He said the flu-like symptoms were gone after a few days, but there was two two lads, another lad from Donegal who had it. He, he, he's he's yeah. run away back from, this is back in April. He was on the plane on the way home. He had to go through Frankfurt to get back to Sweden. There was a, a, a big a big bald lad in front of him. He was sweating and shaking. He, said right, the right. Next, he went into work then the next day and had to go under the table during a meeting and, and uh, just lie down on the floor. And then he was in bed for about two days. The other, this other fella said he couldn't. He had to sleep eighteen day, hours a day. Couldn't there's do anything. Lot of young, since the pubs opened, now there's a few more younger people getting it. Yeah. I around in, in groups and there was hell over there two weeks ago in Dublin. Yeah. Well, they were drinking, drinking out in the street and 
piles up beside you, big clouds around. Yeah. And there was no, there was no two meters apart, right? Uh, no, no. Well, sure, look, people are gonna do what they, people are gonna go out and do their own thing anyway, you know. And uh, there's riots down well, in they, Serbia they, and everything. They, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I could go, go and lock up on that bit of foul and that game. Mm. It was nice, Matt, and talking to Likewise, you. Likewise, Tom. Lovely talking to you too. And and uh, look after yourself now, and good luck with the kitchen. Thanks very much, man. I hope, uh, yeah, when you come over, call up to see your son away. Yeah, will do. I'll shoot a few, a few, a few frames with Tom in the shed. Oh, that's great, yeah. That's we're doing a lot of timber work on there, cutting up stuff, you know, for the kitchen. Smoke a few old jig jigs. Anyway, man, it was nice talking to you. And to you too. Tell, tell, and, uh, tell, the, tell the good lady have, wife I said hello. I will, yeah, uh, she's not well with all arthritis. Um, I, I hope to see you sooner than later. Hey, you, you know what you should give her? You should give her some of that CBD oil. To which? CBD oil, it's called. You can get it. For arthritis? Right, yeah, apparently it does the job. Does it? Yeah. CBD oil. CBD oil. Yes, I tell her. Yeah, go into the health store, they'll probably have some of it. Would you get that in a chemist? No, maybe some chemists. It's dear enough old stuff, but they reckon it's good. All right, man. I'll tell her about that. Yeah. Right, okay, man. Good luck, now. God bless. Nice talk. Nice talking to you. You too. Back to talk. Right, so good luck now. Take care. Good luck. All right, how things? Well, Tommy. Yeah, man. I forgot. I forgot about that. Uh... CBD, is that like fucking cannabis or something? Yeah, but it doesn't have THC in it, which is the psychoactive ingredient. So, does it kill pain, man? Because my mother, man, is in serious pain. I actually feel so sorry for a man. Well, you know uh, what, Tom? Get, get, all you can, can do is give it a go. I tell you the truth. Like, would you understand, man, some days I do hear her crying with her own because she's in that bad of pain. Yeah, well, it does. It, uh, yeah, I mean, no, the, her look heart, into her it. Heart is excellent. Her heart is excellent. Her bones is excellent. Her everything in her body is excellent. It's just she's such bad arthritis, man. It's crazy how bad she is. You can ask the or anyone. She's brutal, man. She can't walk. She's a walking stick, man. My hallway is no longer than a quarter of my garage, and it takes her like five minutes to walk up that. Well, according, according to Shawnee in, in uh, Chicago, he said, CBD, CBD does work on pain. It's a great natural inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, and it helps reduce inflammation. And there's a, Why is arthritis it's such an evil thing, man? It's just something you get when you're old. I feel sorry, I feel sorry for my mother, man, you know. The poor woman, she's dying in pain, you know. CBD jellies as well, Tom. You can get them where they're, they're, they make jelly. You know, it's horrible. It's horrible on me, man. Listen to my mother. She's shouting in pain every night. She's on. Do you know every four hours, man, she takes like four or five strong tablets. And you know when the tablets wear off, the pain is back. Mm, yeah, but I'd well imagine. Sometimes the fucking medication is, is better off with... Uh, it's worse. It's worse. My, mother, my mother is in that bad pain. She would have, She would have liked to have talked to you. But I don't think she can because she's in that bad of pain. Yeah, that, that, I'm sorry to hear that, Tom. Because, you know, you can't talk when you're in pain, man. Yeah. I'm just worried about her, man. What's going to happen to her? What's, what will eventually happen to her? Bro? Like, she's only 71, bro. She's not old. Like, yeah. Well, look, you and me both know that's not old. No. But listen, let me, let, let me tell you this, Tom, right? Just get, get, go and get us some CBD from, and get the strong stuff. And uh, my other is literally telling her now, man, she's down to room now. She he said, we're, We do bring her down tea and we do bring her down her tablets, and we're kind of reminding her here, you know. Yeah, well, I, well, I, I tell you this, right? Like, you, man, I don't, I don't, she doesn't cook anymore. Like, I do make BLT sandwiches to myself, and I do get kebabs, and I do get the odd quarter pounder here and there. Like, my mother can't cook anymore, man. I have a kebab in the microwave for later. And uh, I'd probably make a few these um, fucking these chicken steaks. They're they're like pepper steak kind of, you know. I'd make them as well, and 
So I can't like them the days they're gone man, the days they're gone, my mother making me lose, that's gone. I can fucking I can forget about that. She can't move, man. She's cr- like to be honest with you, man, she's a cripple, you know. Yeah. And the pain is uh, the pain is beyond it's beyond 120 out of 100. You can't describe the pain she's in. It's literally, you could make a documentary the pain she's in. What are we going to do, man? I'm just I'm awfully worried. Just just do, just do, get the uh, the CBD, Tom. Just try, try that first. And, and if not... I tell the mother that. Well, listen, she uh, thinks that's weed. That she thinks that's weed. Right? Yeah, but it's not weed. It's, it, and look, tell her this. She'd be better off on weed than... than she's an old school mother, man, you know. Yeah, but you see, this is where the fucking law... Came in. Uh, my mother, man. Did you yeah, I know. She, yeah, she's a lovely woman. Uh, did you ever meet her? Yeah, I did loads of times. Did you meet her in Swinford a few times? Yeah, did you? yeah. Meet her a couple of times a year, like. Yeah, you might, I think she said she sang you at Christmas there. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. I did. I met her in the, the pub with your uncle. I was doing a gig. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, man, my uncle's not great at the moment either. No. You know what happened to him? He got flowered, man, on his lungs, and he's in the hospital now. Sorry to hear that, Tom. But I think he's getting out now in a few days, and he's on his medication. And look, man, that Patrick Bradley, my uncle, he's a hard, he's a hard yoke, man. That fella lifted his 19 old bother, I'd say. Mm. Well, look, oh, but like he doesn't the... smoke now. Just, he loves his whiskey, man. He could drink a hot. 40 whiskeys a night. Hey, the hot one, man. Not good for the heart, man. The hot it's one. It's not good for the heart, man. Yeah, but Sherlock, when he, when, how old is he now? 73. Sherlock, in for a penny, in for a pound at this stage, like, you know what I mean? He's 74, actually, the 28th of fucking August. Like, yeah, you, you wouldn't I, think I, it. I might go down to him, hopefully. I might go down to most, you know, most. Yeah. Let's meet. So head, head down. I might meet him in that room for a few drinks. I don't give a fuck. We can't go to the hotel or the pub for a few drinks and a bit of a catch-up because of this AIDS, Furman, Raped virus. Right, well, but listen, I'm going to have to shoot off Tom because it's, it's getting late here. But listen, I'll tell you this: CBD, try that, right? And if if that doesn't work, I'm sure some of the boys in America will. Um, Are you going to make my 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 making my flights, Matt? I'll I'll look at them when, uh, later after this. I'll have a look at them. Do you and have I'll... my details now, Matt? I do, I do, yeah. Will you write them details down, Matt? I will indeed, Tommy. I will indeed. Who knows, man? I might even come to Sweden as soon as possible. Well, I don't know what the story is with people coming over yet, because apparently, if you if you they're not allowing people to fly from Sweden to Ireland. My 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 nephew's only twenty, man. He's going off his girlfriend to Amsterdam at the end of fucking August. Shane Doherty's going out with a Polish girl. My other nephew, he's living in Bohola now. You know, Bohola from Swindon. Apparently, the most billionaires in Mayo live in Bohola. He's gone out with a Polish girl, man. They're both working in the hospital. They're actually working full-time in the hospital, Casper. Uh, Shane talks to me, like, every single day. Where he's <laughs> he's always ringing me, like, hey, we're actually, like, brothers, me and Shane. And he's even going to Poland. The end of fucking, where that fucking queer Danny Moher is. <laughs> <laughs> where that queer Danny Moher is. <laughs> but, um... I don't think that Danny Moore is gay, but he's a bit of a weird cunt, isn't he? Man, he's he's uh, he's married with a or no, he's gone out of a girl, he's got a son, and I've seen him with plenty of women. So uh I think he was planning on raping him, you know. Jesus Christ, I'm you you have to go easy on the old uh the R word. I wanna fucking rape hey. him to death, man. I'm gonna literally stick it up his ass hey. and come on. Please, up. man. Yeah, did you see this? We're having a nice conversation till it till it took, you know. I know, man. It's just the way it is. Like, um, yeah. I mean, it's going to get worse than when Isaac Morales got in the Philippines. But I tell you this, right? You you know, it's um, you know, you can't really go around saying the, the, that word these days because it's it's uh, you know, it's 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 the bad word, bad oh, connotation. I, I love that word. Oh, I, do you know why I love it, man? I want to put manners on people. But I'm not a rapist, though. I mean, <laughs> oh, Tom. Look, mate, I have to... I have to. Um, I really do have to go because it's. Uh, it, I didn't realise it'd be this long. Well, I'm, I'm going into my kitchen now, getting my brand-new, beautiful kitchen, getting two more cans of Heineken. I'm going to have 18 cans tonight. 18? 
Well, maybe 16, 17, and a few penners. I have five penners. Let me, I had Sean, the friend of my back, to really pack them out the other night and we'll get back, man. Hey, you know, maybe you should, um, you know what you should do? You should, should make some, so make some weed, my woman, weed brownies and, and give one to your ma, see what she thinks. You know what I remember? Do you know what Dean Doherty, my cousin, did you ever get the video when I sent him, sent it to you from London about the football? Oh yeah, you the United fan. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember the mad bastard? What he said the video I see. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. He reminds me of you, man. But he's actually more of a lunatic than you, Mark. To be honest with you, he's fucking. You think he's a head case? Like he's a very smart cunt. He's lived all his life, half his life in America. He was very, um, he was very, very, very well he, versed on the United. Yeah, but man, I fucking. He, when I was in London with him, we were eating these chocolate bars, man. These chocolate bars are waiting them. I'll never forget how nice it was. Yeah. We killed the munchies off and we got baked. So we didn't actually have to eat because we were eating chocolate, but we did it. And it was fucking unreal, man. If there was no virus now, man, I swear, I'd be over to Jane and we'd be fucking baked. I stayed in his apartment, man, for two weeks over there. I had some crack in London. It was only for two years ago. That's about a year and a half ago. Yeah. But uh, if I come to Sweden, man, can we get chocolate bars with weed? If you bring it with you, you can. Where can you get that, though, man? You can only get it in Amsterdam and England and places. Um, yeah, I mean, you should just get, just, if you've got cousins Did in America. you ever have a chocolate bar, man, with weed in it? Probably, yeah. You, you actually get baked, man, and you don't get the munchies, and you don't get stick or nothing. It's a great buzz, hey. Yeah, well, but hey, well, maybe you should uh, think about getting on the old edibles. Listen, Tom, I'm really going to have to wrap this up, mate. Um, but look... Uh, yeah, man. When are you ringing again, dude? I'll give you, I'll give you a bell during the week. Yeah, well, it's, it's Monday night now. Uh, I suppose Thursday, Friday, if, if you're about, like... Yeah. All right, love. Man, come here. You've my, you've my details, passport details and all that, don't you? Yeah. Man, book that ticket for 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 the third of October. Right, so right, so or third or fourth. I was looking up at the, the dates on the calendar. I'd be getting paid that day again, and it's only every two fucking weeks I get paid. Fucking piece of shit, man. So, um, book it the third of October, man. Go over. For God, actually, God knows where we'll be at that stage. Twelve days should be grand, man. Right. But uh, it's not that long away, man. July is it's mid July now, Wednesday. I mean, Tommy, July will be gone, August will be gone, September will be gone. I'll be there in October. We'll have the biggest crack ever. We'll fill out, we'll do an eating challenge. We'll have a bit of a filming going on. We'll be baked, have a bit of weed, have a bit of drink, go to that Thai restaurant, everything, man. Mm -hmm. All right, but, but, but look, uh, we will discuss this during the week and I'll let you know the crack. But I really do have to go, mate. So, man, I'm just going to listen to a few tunes here now and sit around, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, well, look. Come here. Look after yourself and uh, say hello to your mum. Did I ring you, Martin? Did I ring you, Martin? Or did you ring me? Uh, I can't even remember. Oh, you rang me back. You rang me back. I rang you back because I missed the call. I was talking to the mum. She was having a shower at. All right. Steamy. All right, man. Thanks, thanks anyway for, for reminding me about calling. I won't call you about. No worries, mate. Uh, CBD time. Yeah, don't forget that. Go to health store. CBD. CBD. CBD oil. That's the one. CBD. CBD. Like literally CBD oil. That's the one. Man, you would not believe the pain. I know. Why did right. I cry thinking about her pain? All right. Well, look, come here. Listen, we'll talk about during the week. And, and uh, best of luck to you. God bless you, Tom. All right, Martin. Good luck. Take care. Bye now. Bye 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 bye. Good luck, bro. Good bye, luck, bro. Bye bye bye. Oh, good Lord. Time flies. Yeah, uh, sorry about the R bombs. Uh, he doesn't really intend on doing that. Well, I'd like to fucking think he doesn't, but uh, he he does drop a lot of crude chat. Uh, yeah, but uh, hey, thanks everyone <laughs> very much for sticking around. And uh, yeah, he uh, he dropped a few R bombs. I, I uh, tried to tell him. But, uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? He's he's the real deal, boy. Real deal. All right, lads, everybody, I will uh, I will talk to you soon. And thanks for sticking around. And I, I chat to you. I chat to you. Graham Russell. I always wear a suit, Danny. I always wear a suit. It's a lovely motor. 7.30. It's a workhorse. All right, lads.
Good old school. Good luck. Good bless. Good night.